Rocky s a i s Tea House. Konnichiwa, m i n a s a n It's Gray from Wakazashi's Tea House over in Japan. How are you doing? You good? You Genki? I'm pretty good, thanks. I wanted to share with you a little glimpse of Japan. Can you see it over my shoulder? I've left the curtain open so you can see that, yeah, I'm in a real place. There is like green behind me. That's all you're going to see, though. Okay, I've got a very short summary and review of The Boys Season 3, Episode 1. I've watched all three episodes. I really enjoyed it. It's stupidly over the top. It's funny. It's crazy. It's bonkers. It's dirty. It's got some over the top gross out scenes, which you just can't believe. I mean, it's, it is pretty gory, but I don't think it should bother you because it's played for laughs.、Um, in, Carl Urban is fantastic as Butcher, and Anthony Starr is my favourite. Anthony Starr plays Homelander. You can see him slowly losing his mind. I can't wait to see what happens, where it's going to go. It's a big improvement from season two, so much more like season one, in my opinion. What I'm going to do is I'm going to go through episode one and break it down for you, show you some of the, the scenes, and yeah, talk about my thoughts about it. So that's my very brief review. I recommend it. Go out and watch The Boys season three. The first few episodes are out. Let me know what you think about it. Okay, here we go with my story summary. Episode one opens in the rubble and ruins of a wrecked city. We see the team. What's left of the Seven, Homelander, Starlight, Black Noir, Queen Maeve, and A Train facing off against Stormfront. In a clever allusion to Zack Snyder's Justice League, the colours are muted and dark, dull, brown and grey and green. We're watching scenes from a new movie, Dawn of the Seven, and it's great to see Charlize Theron playing Stormfront. At the premiere of Dawn of the Seven, which of course is made by Vought Studios, Homeland has been asked about how didn't you know that Stormfront was a Nazi? And he tells them that he's just a man who was dating the wrong woman, he fell for the wrong girl, he's taken time over the last year to really step back and find himself. And he tells everybody watching, I can't wait for you to see the real me. It's so sinister, and Anthony Starr's performance is great. He plays a mixture of charming and unhinged. He's like on the, on the verge of losing control. You can see little ticks in his eyes or like little twitches in his face. I don't know how he does it, but it's a great performance and one of the highlights of the show. Frenchie and Kimiko are sent to a party to check up on a superhero. It's one we haven't met yet, a new one to this season. Basically, it's the boys' version of Ant Man. He's called the Termite. And then we get confronted with gross scene number one. This is about 10 minutes into the first episode. So you've got this incredible shrinking man who's known as the Termite. He shrinks to Ant Man's size. He dives into his boyfriend's dick and starts stimulating him from the inside. The problem is, he's been doing some cocaine before this at the party and he's about to sneeze. And when he sneezes, he returns to normal size and explodes his poor boyfriend all over the room. It's a disgusting, over the top, kind of funny, hilarious, black comedy scene. After hearing the scream from his room, Frenchie and Kimiko run in and a crazy fight starts. It's an Ant Man style comedy fight where you've got the termite throwing Frenchie and Kimiko around the room and then he starts running, he's about to dive into Frenchie's nose when Butcher catches him in a little baggie of cocaine. Starlight and Huey are now living together, and we find out that Huey is working for the Federal Bureau of Superhuman Affairs. It's basically a watch group to keep an eye on the superheroes. At this FBSA, Huey is working together with Congresswoman Newman. Now, if you remember her from season two, we saw that she possibly has superhuman powers too, but she's kept them quiet, she's kept them hidden. She was involved with some incredible Scanners style scenes from the last season. If you've seen Scanners, that awesome body horror 70s movie by David Cronenberg with the exploding heads. That's all I'm going to say about that. Here we see Butcher visiting Ryan. If you remember, Ryan is the son of Butcher's ex wife and Homelander, so Ryan was developing powers in the last season. It's a really nice scene here, and it's good to see a relationship develop between Butcher and Homelander's son. It sounds like Butcher has cleaned up his act over the last year, mainly for Ryan's sake. No drinking and no killing soups. In a TV interview on the Cameron Coleman show, Homelander again gets asked directly how he didn't know that Stormfront was a Nazi. He basically tells him that beneath the bulletproof skin, he's just like the rest of us. I'm human, just like you. And then you see Homelander's face again. 
it looks like he's gonna lose it. Is he gonna lose it? Are they pushing him to do that? Next, we catch up with Mother's Milk, who we haven't seen yet. It sounds like he's quit. He's given up helping out the boys and he's attending his daughter's 10th birthday party. Of course, it's his ex-wife there and she's living with another man. You can see it's hurting him, but he's telling her that he's on his medication and he's, he's quit for good. He's out of the superhero business. It's a nice scene by the actor. You can see it's hurting him. It's hurting him to be there to see his wife living with somebody else. He wants to be there with his daughter. At the Vought building, which is now run by the fantastic Giancarlo Esposito. He's the head and he's developing a new version of Compound V. Compound V is a superhero serum in the boys universe. You know, it's basically created the heroes so far. And he's introducing a new one called V24, which can make you a superhero for 24 hours. But he makes it known that it's still in its testing phase and they're trying to iron out a few little problems they're having with it. Here we see Huey visiting what's left of the boys in their office. You've got Butcher, Frenchie and Kimiko. Now Huey tells Butcher that the termite has been checked into a hospital or basically a rehab clinic after what happened in the scenes after the party when Butcher captured him in a little baggie of coke. And there was a great line about, you know, what do you expect after Butcher force fed him a metric Belushi of coke? You know what Butcher thinks about the soups. He thinks they should be put down. Now we're back on the Cameron Coleman show. We've got the deep. That's right, The Deep, what's happened to him? He's no longer a member of the Seven. He's promoting his autobiography about how he escaped from the Church of the Collective, which is a nice dig or allusion to the Church of Scientology. Back at the Vought offices, Homelander's told that Starlight is being made co-captain of the team, and you can tell he's not happy about that. With everything that's happening, Homelander's popularity is sinking, so they're bringing in Starlight to boost the ratings. How much is Homelander going to be able to take? How crazy will he become? In a tense scene after this one, you see Homelander meet A-Train in the corridor and he's making digs at A-Train's weight, the fact that A-Train's not running anymore. And then he gets angry and you see Homelander's eyes start to go Superman red like he's going to burn him. You know that Homelander's this close to breaking. Then in this surprising scene, or surprising for me, we see Homelander visit Stormfront in hospital. Well, what's left of Stormfront? She's disfigured, but she's still alive. He's basically telling her all his problems and, you know, decrying that his popularity is down. You know, he should be number one. He's the leader. He's the most important. Queen Maeve, out of costume, goes to see Butcher and she talks about Soldier Boy, a new character in this season who we haven't seen yet. He was rumoured to have been killed, preventing a nuclear accident back in the 1980s. She talks about some kind of a weapon that possibly killed Soldier Boy, and there's a chance it could harm or even kill Homelander. She passes Butcher a file with information on a team called Payback. They were a previous superhero team before the Seven, and there are connections to Soldier Boy. There he is in the centre of the photo holding the shield. Queen Maeve then gives Butcher three capsules of V24, warning him that he needs all the help he can against Payback because they are very, very dangerous. But Butcher's kind of laughing them off. Back at Butcher's apartment, we see Homelander paying him a visit. Homelander makes a speech about their endgame and only one of them is going to be left standing. Butcher tells him, that's all he fucking wants. In the final scene of the episode, Huey follows Congresswoman Newman after work and he sees her talking to a guy called Tony. Is he an old friend? We hear Tony mention something called Red River. Then suddenly they start fighting. Congresswoman Newman blows a hole in his head and it's gross scene number two. Huey sees it all and he's shocked and that's where the episode finishes. Okay, that's it for my review. I hope you enjoyed it. That's episode one of season three of The Boys. Please let me know what you thought about the episode. Please let me know if you're watching it. Are you going to watch it? Do you hate the series? Please let me know why. I'd love to hear from you in the comments. Okay, as always, this is Grey thanking you for watching and saying, Matane! Wagisashis! Tea House. Please subscribe.